Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Shiver Gaming Podcast. I believe episode 140. I incorrectly said last week was 140, of course. Uh, I never am right about episodes, but I'm pretty sure it's 140 today. And of course, it's October 5th, 2022. And of course, I have with me today, you can tell if you're on YouTube, very beautiful picture of Mario Up Bros. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I uh, my mortal shell has passed away, mm. and I'm only a disembodied voice. That's why it's only the picture. Yeah, yeah. You can. I had to do a seance. You you walked me through yeah. it very well, but I had to yeah, do yeah. the I'm, seance. I'm, I'm a ghost. Mm -hmm. I'm a ghost. I'm available for all pa podcasting. You can, yeah. you can contact, email me, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll haunt your show for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ethereal. All you have to do is get a goat. That's all exactly. it costs me. Easy. How are you, my friend? Uh, that you've had quite, I oof, what? It's been two months, maybe plus that you've been on. You've had quite the two months, I'd say. Uh, one, of it's course, been, you started. Yeah. You started Spoonful with Emmett Watkins Jr. We've had him on. He talked a little bit about it, and um, you went back to college. Let's let's discuss these two things, and then we'll get into the show. Yeah, no, no. But it's funny. Last time we recorded, I I I remember telling you a little bit about it, yeah. like teasing. Yeah, you, a you teased bit. me a little bit. It was fun. Yeah, since since then, Spoonful is officially a thing. It's 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 Emmett and I's sort of passion project where we we realized we really like talking to each other, and we decided to make it a podcast. It's it's almost a natural evolution of of my previous podcast, One Big Topic. Yeah. But now having Emmett, you know, we're the one, the one and the two. It, it it's it's great. It's been honestly a really fun time. It's I'm really proud of it. And yeah, now. You mentioned it as well. Now that I'm gonna start school uh, early next year, it's Spoonful is the is the uh, one stop shop for all of my creative endeavor endeavors because I'm gonna be a little tighter on time. Two things that I'll say about Spoonful. One, there's a fantastic episode that I listened to. Blessing Audio, you Junior, you had on. It was a great episode. I love that one. And then two, that's a bless. Yes, that was yes, so very good. And then two, I feel like the gaming industry is missing the the two. We used to have the two, like, 10, what, almost, not, not 10 years yet, but 10 years ago, the two was Colin and Greg. That was the, that was the two guys that you'd point to and be like, they're the center kind of of podcasting, of gaming, at least podcasting. And I feel like you two are definitely in the right spot where you can be that again. And that's what I want. I want a Colin and Greg of now. I feel like we're getting that a little bit. Peace, I love you. But I want two people that i can point to be like they're they're the commentators of the industry and i feel like that's uh, that's you two uh, uh pretty close already that's uh first of all very kind of you obviously uh all you know most of us on the internet that we know each other from where we know each other we grew up listening to to those podcasts so hey man it's just it's a fun time em and i love each other we're great we love doing shows together and hopefully we don't uh, have a huge falling out in a few years. Oh, I mean, that's how you know you'll make it, though. Yeah, you, you know, we I see this recently to... with the Try Guys. Like, you gotta, someone has yeah, to fuck yeah, up, yeah. and then you. I'm explode. excited till we can like hate each other yeah. and diss each other on social media. And <laughs> Correct. So yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You you uh you do the thing where you 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 tweet about them, but it's just yeah. the screen capture of the tweet. So you don't know totally. who you do. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Can't oh, wait. Oh, we're going to get super petty. <laughs> we're going to get real petty. I <laughs> yep. can't wait. Yeah, very excited. Well, we got into a little bit of Mario. Let's get into the show with not so rapid fire. Preview of the Gotham Knights went out this morning, actually. I've listened a little bit to a quick couple thoughts. It doesn't seem ubiquitous as uh, a single topic point. I think everyone kind of has a unique view of it. Check out who you'd like to hear from on these specific things. I saw IGN. I saw Kind of Funny. I saw um, uh, Fighting Cowboy. I, I mean, I, I think just about everyone got invited to this press event. So go check that out if you want to look at the previews. I am sold on the game. I don't think I need to hear anything else. I just want to play it pretty much so I can tell if I want to buy it. Yeah, I think uh, Gotham Knights is one of those interesting ones. And I think we uh, either we talked about it recently or I, or I talked about it on a podcast recently where... That game, when it was announced, it has so much excitement surrounding it. People yeah. were stoked. Everything was positive. And for some reason, the more stuff that has comes out come out of the game, the the more people seem to be less excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm excited for. I mean, I'm not expecting you know a game of the year contender or anything. I I, I kind of haven't from for a while. As long as it's a fun time and and I can go around and beat some people up and the court of owls are used well and I can hang out with my friends and stuff. I'm I'm stoked. I I don't really need it to be anything more than that. And you know, set up your expectations properly. Watch the previews like you're saying, and 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 hopefully you like the game, man. Yeah, I. Pretty much agree with everything you said. I, as time has gone on, I've actually got less excited. I used to, I used to be a game of the year contender for me. Um, uh, when we first saw it back in what two years ago now, maybe maybe a year ago. Uh, yeah, two years. I'm pretty sure. Um, and when I first saw it, I was like, "This is going to be something special." And then little everything a little comes out. And I'm like, uh, "Okay, I'm probably not going to be what I thought it was." But I still think I'm gonna have a good time, which is at the end of the day, all that really matters. Yeah. Overwatch 2 is out. I have not been able to play it because it's had multiple server yeah, issues. No, nobody has. Yeah, no one has. I had to watch streamers play it to uh, really yeah. be able to tell. I, I don't think I have anything unique to say on this game. It looks like Overwatch 1. I don't think really anyone else would say different. Uh, check it out, of course. If if and when you get a match, I've tried four or five times and it's just it's not working. There's first off a bunch of people trying to play the game. And then second off, they are actually suffering from DDoS attacks. Uh, pretty regularly it seems so it's 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 pretty shitty all around unfortunately for them do you think do you think they are ever gonna have an online game that launches and that's it it just <sighs> launches and people play it the day it launches and people are like man what a good game and and there's no problem because i feel like at this point everybody who plays video games should expect that if a big online game is launching you're probably not going to be able to play it for a few days I, I pretty much, yeah, I don't think we'll really ever get there because it's just, it's very expensive to do that, right? You have to buy for yeah. servers that you're probably not going to use after launch. I mean, so if, 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 if fucking Blizzard doesn't have the money for it, exactly. then, then yeah, nobody if, does. If Blizzard got, I mean, it was, I mean, they, they know how big it was going to be, so, it, but it didn't matter. So if, if they're, if they're not ready for it, then I don't know who's, I, I will say Destiny 2 has had pretty stable launches since beyond light i remember beyond light was pretty bad but since then they've been pretty good but i don't although i love destiny i don't think they're really pulling the numbers that overwatch 2 is so i i don't think they've the, it's really one-to-one comparison there but uh try it if you can i will try maybe tomorrow i don't know it's it, it's it's giving me multitude of issues i've had the uh once he loads the game it's like server message thing so i'm like okay well i'll just wait i'll watch streamers play it and really just wait until the game uh, is a little more stable. Quick story, as it's being reported that the PS5 has been jailbroken, albeit in a very small way. A modder Spectre dev showed a vulnerability on PS5's firmware running 4.03 or lower, which is a very old former from, I think, last year, 2021, I think, late last year. Um, it allowed him to do a few things. He was able to access a debug menu of the console. Most interesting, he was able to download PT on it, although he can't launch the game, but he was able to download the uh, PKG file on it. This is really just something I should comment on. I don't think uh, I have anything unique to say. It's just interesting that someone has already figured out how to bust this thing open. Now, it is a very old firmware, and it took this dude a year, and apparently it's not even guaranteed to work. It just works, like, some of the time. But this could be a stepping tone to other firmware uh, crackage, which I'm sure Sony will keep an eye on. I just love that PT is like like everybody's white whale. It's like I I was able to get PT on it and it was like, oh shit. That made a smile on my face where it was like, oh, that is the perfect way of demonstrating like you were able to do something. Is like, yeah. hey, look, I, I downloaded PT. I was like, oh, okay. That's cool that it's still relevant to this day. One day somebody's gonna find like PT's fucking source code or something <laughs> yeah. and be able to install it on, on a Steam Deck and yep. shit like that. Something like that will happen one day, I'm sure. Definitely, definitely. Hideo Kojima hints at some sort of reveal. This is linked to the Who Is She teaser he did earlier in the month. Oh, sorry, earlier last month uh, during TGS. He kind of hinted that it, it. now the next question is where. So apparently we're going to soon find out whatever he's talking about. The general consensus is it's something to do with Eli Fanning and a game. Although I don't think we've cracked exactly what it is. It could be a reference to a new game. Could be in reference to Death Stranding 2, although I highly doubt the the latter. I love Kojima, man. What a what a weird guy. In he, the best way possible. Yeah. What a weirdo. No, I agree. He he's so strange. And I don't love think him. I have a yeah, I don't I we don't really have like a weirdo people that will play up like that. 
Like I, that- personally, I, I'm I'm excited to find out where is she. I'm excited to find yep. out when is when, she. Why is she? How is she? How is she? How is she? How yeah, is she? yeah how, that's how true. How? No one has asked. How is she? Yeah, for real. Come on. <laughs> Heavy rumors. Although I couldn't do a write up because it came right when I was starting the show. Apparently, Sony was able to get Half Life Alex rights to PSVR two. Unconfirmed, and I couldn't find anyone very reliable to point this up. I just want to bring it up as this could be a potential thing. I don't think it's crazy to think they're able to work out with a Valve to be able to get Half Life Alex on the PSVR two, but wanted to report on it nonetheless. Would be pretty cool. I mean, obviously, Half Life Alex got so much love, and yeah. it's it's respected as one of the best VR games out there and mm-hmm. more people getting to play it. It would be a really cool thing to have at launch for PSVR too. So I'm, um, I don't know if it'll happen, but I, I guarantee you definitely PlayStation tried. Hopefully they yep. succeed. Yeah, I agree. I, I find uh, it to be the first VR game. I think that everyone kind of agreed that it's not good for a VR game. It's good for just a game. Yeah, for sure. This one's going to be via Nibelian on twitter blooper team announces the medium will be turned into a tv show that's going to be su- uh, supervised by i'm going to butcher this omzi baginsky 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 probably executive producer on the witcher on netflix so it looks like they're most likely getting a netflix show uh we are getting a giant swath of constant games to tv shows to movies to things of that nature so get buckled up because that's not the last one yeah, it's, uh, uh, video games are a very profitable market and clearly making TV and movie adaptations of video games is also a profitable market, so it's just going to keep happening. We had a very Shout inter- out to the Mario trailer coming out tomorrow. That is true. I, I should have wrote, wrote up something about that, but it didn't seem per- perfectly that's, relevant. That's why but you that's got actually, me, man. That's, yeah, that's yeah, why I'm here. I'm the, here to keep you honest. This is a perfect post of putting it. Yeah, Mario is getting a trailer tomorrow. Um, I love the he doesn't have a butt jokes from the poster because he doesn't. Yeah, I don't know what a real flat one, n- not real, even real flat. flat it's almost concave as if as if yeah. there is an absence of an ass. It, very strange. Maybe that's maybe that's the maybe that's part of the hero's journey. You know, he starts with no ass and the more that he jumps and climbs, <laughs> he develops a big dumper. I would I would buy a ticket to that if that is true. That At the end, yeah. he just has this giant cake. Hell yeah, man. We had a interesting, very open conversation with CG Project Red during their earnings call and basically detailing that what the rest, I mean, pretty much the next de- decade looks like, although they want to say within the next six years, a lot of this is going to happen. And we got to look at their projects. Let's go over. I'm just, this is a pretty long one, so buckle in. Let's start with Project Sirius. Game developed by Molasses Flood with support from CD Projekt Red. Set in the Witcher universe, it's compared to be existing CD Projekt Red games. This one targets a much broader audience. Ser- Serious will include single player and multiplayer gameplay. So it looks like there will be a Witcher type game, but also have multiplayer, but also single player. Very curious if that will actually be good. Project Polaris. This is going to be the beginning of the new Witcher trilogy. Uh, this will consist of three games, and they plan to release during a six-year publishing cycle. Very ambitious, starting with the release date of Polaris itself. Very ambitious to hear that they want all this, uh, that trilogy to be done in a, in a six-year publishing uh, cycle. I don't know. I, I don't know about that one either. Uh, I'll let you finish, and then I'll give you my thoughts. Yeah, uh, this is Project Canis Majors. Full-fledged release set in the Witcher universe to be built by an external studio under the supervision of experienced developers who have previously worked on Witcher games. They intend to use Unreal Engine 5 and a specific tool set created for um, Polaris itself. Very interesting. It might be a spin-off game of some kind. I will be very fascinated to see who that external studio is once we see the game. Probably the most shocking one, Project Orion, a cyberpunk release which will further develop the potentially embodied by this universe. Project Orion will be developed by CG Project Red in North America, which will comprise the newly created Boston hub along with our existing Vancouver team. The studio is separated from the Molasses Flood, which is, of course, working on the previous series project. And then the last one is a new IP called Project Hater, a new original IP for the first time in its history. CG Project Red is developing an entirely new universe from scratch. Early conceptual work began in 2021 
as of the publication date of this document, there is an ongoing work on the foundations of the world. Mario, we got six projects from CG Project Red. Uh, wh what, upon when you first saw this, what did you first think? Yeah, it's just, it, it I, I hate to say it, but it doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. Um, I, I, I appreciate that CD Projekt Red is being very ambitious, and I understand that starting especially with The Witcher 3, the, the studio was headed towards major expansion, right? And, and Cyberpunk 2077 could have and should have and would have been one of the biggest games ever had that launch gone differently. And obviously since then, you know, they, they've, they've built more goodwill. They've, they've done a lot of good work on Cyberpunk 2077. I know some people like the, the, the new show and the expansion and all that. It, it, I think it's good for them. I hope that, you know, the, the launch of 2077 was more of the outlier. But if, if I were heading up CD Projekt Red, which I'm obviously not... I'm not saying that it's a bad idea to do all the projects that they're doing and, and start working on a new Witcher trilogy and a new cyberpunk and a new IP. I think all that's great. They can do all that. I, I don't know if, if coming out of the gate, saying all these things and, and announcing all these things and saying that you're going to release a full trilogy in six years, I don't know if that was the right strategy because for me personally, I, I've lost a little bit of trust on CD Projekt Red and they haven't fully gained it back. And I think it would have been a better strategy to just focus on whatever their next launch is on Witcher 4 or whatever, you know, the first one of the new trilogy, get all that goodwill back and then be like, hey, by the way, we have all these other games coming out. We have this and the way they have that. I think right now they're still in a position where the CD Projekt Red is a little tainted. Like if I say CD Projekt Red now... It sounds like a completely different thing that if I say CD Projekt Red after The Witcher came out. You gotta remember, when The Witcher 3 came out, they were seen of, as like one of the darlings of the video game industry. Yep. Um, they had the the thank you letters in the box. They had all the free DLC. They had all the all the really, really great expansions of, of The Witcher 3. They were seen of, as one of the top tier best developers, not only in quality, but in like, you know, the way that you feel about them. And... I just don't know if announcing a million games coming out over the next two years is the right strategy. Uh, I mean, all that to say is, if it works out for them and they release the trilogy and, and it's within six or seven years or whatever it may be, which sounds so, 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 so difficult and so unbelievable, but let's say it all works out for them, then great, awesome, I'm happy for them, but it, it almost seems like they're setting themselves up for failure. There's already so many narratives that CD Projekt Red lies to people and you're just leaving the door open for that to continue with this kind of announcement yeah i think it comes across um to a lot of people as not learning from what happened previously especially when cyberpunk is so fresh on the mind i mean it, it in terms of video games it did kind of feel like it just came out especially with with that with how it launched it pretty much broke a lot of people's respect for the game and maybe that's what they're trying to do with these releases is maybe try to regain some first of all for respect and second off i'm sure money as their actual uh market value decreased considerably i think they're almost a third of what they used to cost prior to cyberpunk's launch so they they hit uh quite a bit financially for when they launched that and also bringing into the amount of projects i will give them this there there are over 800 people working at these now of course combined so they they definitely have manpower to be able to work this through and they have two of these games being supported on by who knows to what degree but i also agree this does seem or at least come across as like too many cooks in the kitchen potentially especially when you have this many projects to focus on the trilogy is the most complicated one where yeah uh, that can't that i don't i don't even believe that's gonna happen uh yeah it's it seems I mean, in I don't think in the entire history of video games, unless you look at like the Uncharted trilogy yeah. in the PS3 yeah. era, Agreed. I don't think you can make a trilogy of video games in such a short amount of time, especially when they're Witcher games, which are like supposed to be hundred plus hour experiences. It, it just, I don't know, it doesn't seem realistic at all. Uh, 
I yeah. don't know why they're setting it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just don't know why they're doing that to themselves. Like, I think No Man's Sky is such a good example mm. of obviously the the No Man's Sky launch was everything that it was, and what the team did at Hello Games, huge respect because they they hunkered down, they basically went completely dark on social media for a long time. And they put their heads down and they got to work and they fixed the game. And now people love No Man's Sky and they, they've done so many great expansions and that game has grown and, and evolved. And it's been one of the best comeback stories in video games. And I, I, I was just, this all is almost feels like if when all of the No Man's Sky controversy was happening, if Hello Games said, oh yeah, we, we hear you, we know what you mean. We're we're gonna release uh, four No Man's Sky games in the future, and we're are we also working on on a, two different new IPs, and we're also gonna do, do another Dangerous Joe game in the next four <laughs> years. It's it's it just seems like the wrong messaging. Yeah, it it does. It, it, it I I agree. It it does come across as a, a almost tone deaf to where it's like yeah. Uh, we know we just did this with Cyberpunk, but you know, this time it's going to work. I just, I can't wait to see. I mean, it really said, it says starting with the release date of Polaris, they will then start six years and then we'll have two more games. I mean, that just, that's almost preposterous when yeah. you have to account for the other titles because the other games are going to need people on it as well. If this was just one trilogy and they had half of the team working on it, I'd be a little more uh, agreeable, but having yeah. three other projects, Unless, two other people needing to support two other studios as well. I, I just, that, that seems hard to believe. Unless they're somehow doing like a Lord of the Rings, Call of Duty thing where all of the teams are working on all three games at the same time, then, then maybe, but it just sounds completely unbelievable. Like I, I, I would be shocked if that, became true whatever their timeline is i would be utterly shocked if that happened the way they they say it will happen yeah i i will be too um and just to quickly note the ceo uh which is actually in the joint ceo role is moving down and actually going to see if he could be chairman of the surprise report so that is technically a step down as he will be moving to the chairman board so although that might mean nothing that could mean a lot uh, in terms of their planning stages. I wish him the best. I mean, I, I legitimately hope that Cyberpunk 2077 was just a blip in the history of CD Projekt Red and and that they keep going up because their 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 history leading up to Cyberpunk was was so cool and was such a good history to follow. Witcher 3 is one of my favorite games ever. Uh still haven't gone around to playing Cyberpunk. I will eventually, but I, I hope CD Projekt Red is one of the mainstays in the industry for a while, and I wish him the best. I just, I just, I feel like oh, under promise and over deliver is a better strategy, and they're definitely not doing that. Agreed. I think you put it well, so we'll move on. Of course, I start this show every week with a single question that I post to my co host, and of course, that is what have you been playing, Mario? Actually, don't play any video games. No, oh. I, I don't like them. I think they, oh, they wow. suck personally. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't we know. don't have enough people shitting on video games in the industry. Sounds so. like a sounds like a big old waste of time. <laughs> if you ask me. Yeah, I'm just. I, you know what I do? I I take protein powder. I work out. That's all I do. Yeah, Big no, that's, that's what I do. And when I have some free time, I you know I I, I read a book about about uh, math. That's I, cr what I, do. I cram in my feelings. That's what I do. Yeah, in my spare time. yeah. Beat them down in, into the depths of my body. Totally, totally. No, I've <laughs> I've been basically all I've been playing has been Elden Ring, nonstop. Oh. Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, and now yeah, I finally have a Steam Deck, and. It's been lovely. I, I've enjoyed using my Steam Deck. 90% of the time that I've used on my Steam Deck has been putting stuff on the Steam Deck and <laughs> setting stuff up and emulators and yeah. Xbox cloud gaming and stuff. Yep. And the other 10% has been playing Elden Ring, being like, wow, it's crazy how I can play Elden Ring. So, yeah, it's been a whole lot of Elden Ring. Yeah. I, when we last left you, you had semi-begun your like, FromSoft journey. I think you had played, oh, yeah. I think, oh, I'm... Dark Souls. So, like, now you've pretty much made your way. Th 
As far as, far as I remember correctly. It, you're, yeah, yeah. That, I'm deep in it. That's awesome. I've, so this year, thanks to uh, Sifu, right, when it came out earlier. Because right. when Sifu came out, uh, you know, review discussions really got me interested into the game. I got it. Got super obsessed with the game. Loved it. And, you know, a lot of people were comparing Sifu to, to FromSoft games and saying how a lot of the yeah. sort of the, the, the core structure of it takes a lot from from software games and i had never been interested in from soft games never really did it for me not even because of the quote unquote difficulty just cuz i was like i don't know i don't really care that much and it wasn't until i played sifu and i got really into that game that i was like you know what maybe i should give the from soft games a try and i played and beat bloodborne uh bloodborne yes. instantly became like one of my favorite games ever yeah and wow. so after bloodborne i was like well I should give these a go. And since then, I've beaten Bloodborne. I've beaten the Demon Souls remake. I've beaten Dark Souls. I've beaten Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is Sifu. Like, yeah. I don't think people have, like, I had heard people talk about how they're similar and stuff. And then I played it. I'm like, no, these are the same game. And mm -hmm. like, this, it's good. They're both great at what they do. I'm like, they're the same thing. And it's awesome. And I love that they are the same thing. And I wanted to be Dark Souls 2 and 3 before getting to Elden Ring, but given that Elden Ring is like a, a, a gigantic, ginormous game, yeah. I figured I didn't have enough time. So I'm punting Dark Souls 2 and 3 till some point next year, and I'm like 45 hours into Elden Ring, still got plenty to go, but I'm deep in it, man. Like, huge from software nerd became like from zero to a thousand this year that's awesome i i'm i think you made a wise choice with the elder ring this isn't especially since you had to go to dark souls 2 which i would argue is is the worst from software game they've probably yeah i'm kind of I'm, I'm honestly i've seen so much stuff about dark souls 2 so many people tell me about it and i've seen so much gameplay about it and i can already tell the things that people don't like about it i still want to give it a try the just to play it for myself but i'm definitely if 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 the things that I already don't like about it from looking at it stick, then I'll just drop it. I'm not I, I'm not forcing myself to beat it if I'm not enjoying it. Yeah, I would say it's still a good game. It's just nowhere near a, a to the quality of all the other ones. It, it's it's right. good. It's just there's so much missing. It feels like and it's obvious once you learn about how the development went and who was in charge of it, you, you soon realize why that is the case. Um, but yeah, I, I think you made a wise choice, and I'm glad to hear you enjoy Elden Ring. That is a very special game. Everyone should at least try once to see if you like it. I've had a very eventful week as I've beaten two games. Uh, first oh. one, I'll start as it seems to have gone under a lot of people's radar, and I'm hoping maybe someone or some a few people will try it based on my recommendation. But if you have Game Pass or you just want to purchase this on Xbox... Immortality is a fantastic game. I think everyone should at least give a shot if what I'm about to describe to you sounds appealing. So it is almost not even a game, I would argue. It is more of like a narrative experience kind of uh, situation. So uh, I'm not going to explain too much because it just completely destroys the point of playing the game. But I will say there, uh, you play as a... I forget the actual name of this uh, profession, but essentially you play a person that needs to organize a film and they need to to kind of restore them. And you are watching three movies um, and the and you start off with about three scenes and you are able to click on things in that scene to bring you to another scene. So, for instance, if there is a scene with a knife you can click on the knife and it might bring you to another scene with a knife. If there's a pillar behind the person, you can click on that. That might be linked to another scene with a pillar, etc., etc. And then a giant mystery happens while you're finding these videos and and discovering more about the movies. And then you, f you find out uh, more about the main character that's sent around. There's a lot of very, very good stuff. And I want, if any of that sounds interesting to you, please give it a shot. It's on Game Pass if you don't want to spend any money on it. Or if you already have a Game Pass uh, membership active, please give it a shot because it was a very special experience. I I actually played it and immediately went and got all the achievements for it because I just I was like I need a little bit more of this. And the mystery, although you can beat the game, you might not figure everything out. Uh, and I think the achievements are actually a perfect example of how to enhance a game 
by looking for the achievements as it will give you more in, uh, insight into the actual story beneath the experience. And I love it. I can't recommend it enough. And you don't even need to like know how to play video games. This is like such a experience where if as long as you know that you can move an analyst that can press a you, that's that's really all you need to do My yeah i um i played her story for the for the very first time Ooh. um this year also um you know if people if people don't know it all of these games are are, are by sam barlow he yep. sam barlow has almost created his own specific little genre where you know it's all fmv and um yeah, all his games sort of involve that investigative figuring out the story elements through, you know, different things. And, and yeah, I mean, her story was one that I was wanting to play for a while. Uh, really glad I did. It was it was fun. It's one of those games that you can just beat in one sitting. And from everything I've heard, Immortality is a good time. I'm definitely going to keep my eye out on it. I have it installed on my PC. I just have to get around to it at some point. It is. It's definitely the first time I've actually enjoyed an FMV experience at all. Uh, yeah. I, I remember when I played, um, uh, when I was starting to play more games in the 360 era when I was growing up, I remember specifically Need for Speed, just Need for Speed. It was it, like the remake. I think it was like 2013 or something. Uh, had FMV and I immediately shut it off as soon as I saw it because that wasn't the, that that's like the biggest turnoff for me is like when they try to put actual videos into video games but it makes sense in these because you're like m you're putting together movies so like it, it looks and feels much better when you play them and I love how I, I never mind I guess I'll spoil it uh, and then the second game is uh, a Plague Tale Innocence and I wanted to replay this because the second one is close to coming out and I never got into it the first time I tried playing it. I couldn't, I just didn't really enjoy my time with it and it didn't really grab me, but I wanted to give it a second shot. Went back to it. Had a great time. I, I went, played through it all. It's very short. It only took me about 10 hours to actually beat the game, which is very surprising. Uh, I liked it. I, I will say the ending is very strange given the uh, type of game it is. But I definitely recommend it if you want to be ready for when the second one comes out uh, the 18th of this month. I'm very excited now as I'm very curious where the story goes because it seems to end almost definitively at the end. But there's a little breadcrumbs that they might pick up, uh, which I, again, very much enjoyed this game. I uh, am thinking about going back, seeing if I can get the rest of the achievements. But right now, I, I kind of wanted to give it a break, see if I go back. But I loved that that game. Was that something you've ever played? Uh, played no, I, I, I had it installed on my PC through Game Pass. And I was going to play it probably before the launch, but then they took it off of Game Pass. And I was mm -hmm. like, am I going to buy it? I'm like, I'm not going to buy it. So, <laughs> you know what? You know what? That, that This one's for you guys. You guys can keep that one. I'm yeah. happy. I'm happy for everybody. The plot twist that the little boy was a rat all along yeah. is crazy. Yeah. yeah. It totally is nuts. Totally unexpected. It is nuts. He, uh, it's, he's a were rat. And he just transforms yeah, him. Yeah, we... You know, I feel like they gave it away when, when you know, all the cheese that he was mm -hmm. eating, but, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, it, and they gave him the same name as there. the rat from Harry Potter, which is even stranger. Right, Very right, strange. Right, right. I was yeah. like, hmm. He kind of tipped your lot hand. A lot of foreshadowing. <laughs> Rumor round of the week. Uh, Lance Reddick fucked up. Um, he uh, tweeted out uh, uh, this. And it's just a picture of him in a motion capture shoot. Hard at work. The, in a session for hashtag voice. Horizon Forbidden West. And it's Lance Reddick's face with Aloy next to it. And it says uh, DLC. Um, I, I mean, you know, he's... I guess he's used to movies as well and, and TV shows. So he, he knows he can't talk about... Or he, I guess, maybe doesn't know he doesn't talk about the, these things. But he... I mean, he, he couldn't have been more obvious with, the, with this. So that's amazing. Uh... So the then, voice actor fucking up and and not realizing mm -hmm. they weren't allowed to say this thing yet is like one of my favorite pipelines, yeah. Uh, because it happens inevitably. Yeah. Uh, you know who who knows? It could be a goofy situation, but at the end of the day, I mean, I don't think anybody would be surprised. No. At Horizon DLC, the first game had DLC, and you know it it involved story and involved more scenes with Lance Reddick. So yeah, dude, like. Fuck yeah, give me a DLC for that game. Love that game. I want to play more of it, so I'm down. I mean, I I would expect an official announcement of the DLC to come 
at some point next year. Oh, and I, I, and I was hypothesizing it, maybe Game Awards. Maybe also, I I think that might be a little bit too soon, given that mm. the game already came out came out this year. I would I would expect next year to be an announcement, but honestly, this doesn't really. It, you know, I, I already expect the DLC for this game to come out, so yeah. it's not like this totally blew me away. Agreed. It's just kind of a funny little moment, especially because he looks so happy in that. He picture. looks he's so such a happy. happy. Guy. He's so happy. He's I love Lance Reddick because um he's also a voice of uh of a uh, big character in Destiny, and he always uh tweets about like Destiny things, and and he uses the voice and things. So he, you can tell he just has fun with his stuff. I love I love it. He's he's. He's uh, infectious, I would say, with like uh, how nice and uh, forthright he at least seems. Yeah, he's he's such a fun guy because like all of his characters are such serious dudes, but in real life he's just like a like such a funny little dude. I love him. Another example of something I couldn't corroborate, and also it came right at the, as I was going live, so I couldn't really prep for anything. But I'm going to put this out. I don't think this. I don't, this doesn't hold much water for me, but just in case, uh, Sledgehammer Games is developing a sequel to Advanced Warfare. Apparently, this is going to be not next to Call of Duty, but the one after that, so 2025, I believe, um, because, of course, next year is going to infamously not have a Call of Duty game. So, yeah, 2024, of course, is the one, uh, apparently, that might be set in Iraq, and then this one, uh, the one after that, will be developed by Sledgehammer, and it will apparently be a sequel to Advanced Warfare. Again... Did not see a lot of people reporting on this. Couldn't cooperate anywhere. I'm just putting it out there as it could be real. Now we have a thing that I found very interesting via Benji's sales. Now this was originally a Japanese Bloomberg post that uh, he very nicely translated for us. Or at least had someone else translate for us. This is via his Twitter account. Bloomberg reporting PlayStation VR 2 shipments are expected to significantly outplace PSVR 1. 2 million units by March 2023. It took PS4, uh, PSVR 1 eight months to reach 1 million sold, and production apparently began in September. We are six months or less from launch now. Expect price launch lineup announcement very soon. Won't be shocked at all if we have all the details by the end of the month, considering the hardware is now officially in mass production. That's all via Benji Sales. Uh, I think this is... Yeah, I pretty much agree with everything you said. If it's already in mass production... Uh, it is coming very imminently. It could be as soon as March of next year. I don't think that's crazy to say. Um, what did you think of these news that's potentially, first off, it's in mass production, and second, we still don't know the price, and it's being actively made, which is very funny. Yeah, we're we're, we're definitely nearing getting an announcement soon. If you, if you follow along with how PlayStation tends to do things, you, you could kind of see it coming that they're going to you know, announce an official release day and a price point at some point coming up because they've been ramping up their PSVR 2 talks. And, you know, uh, I don't know if it'll be its own state of play or or, or if it's just going to be a blog post. I'm, at this point, I'm pretty much just expecting a blog post. But yeah. it's coming for sure. It's at, at some point, we're going to know the price. We're going to know the, 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 the release date. Hopefully the price is nothing preposterous. And yeah, I mean, speaking of Horizon... Call of the Mountain has the the previews of that were pretty much overwhelmingly positive from everything I heard and yep. hey like it if PlayStation can do what Valve did with Half Life Alex and deliver an experience that's more than just a, a a VR experience and and just something that's a really really good game hell yeah man and I uh, you gotta assume there's gonna be another. Uh, uh, Astrobot game, and yep. I'm in. Yep. I would, I would buy a PSVR almost exclusively for another Astrobot game because both the 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 I forget the name of the VR one and Astro's Playroom on the PS5 are both Rescue like, Mission. Rescue Mission, yeah. yeah. Rescue Mission and Astro's Playroom are like two incredible games, and mm -hmm. I want more of them. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if they do the same thing they did with PS5 and have it. Uh, standard with the VR2, although uh, it will be interesting to see how they handle that. I am like, getting a tiny bit nervous that it's taking so long for them to announce a price. They definitely know what the price is. Um, so why are they waiting? Maybe it's good news and they want it to be, have a big pop during a showcase. And it's really exciting. It's 500 
ish bucks and they're like oh yeah you know uh, it's only 500 given uh, i say only 500 uh, it's, it's still expensive but that is uh probably i think as low as it probably would get um yeah probably it's it's a shame that the the vr is going to probably cost the same as a console but yep. you know it's uh i hope playstation takes psvr 2 seriously and it has a good life uh psvr 1 i definitely i think i went through the same timeline that everybody else who had a psvr went through where mm -hmm. when i first bought it i used it a lot and i loved it and you know, I had it set up and then, you know, I started playing a lot of Beat Saber and then started playing less and less Beat Saber and then never touched it again yep. for months. So, you know, the the fact that this one's one connection, the fact that this one has the setup is so much easier because you don't have to worry about the camera and all that. Um, I'm hoping that it has a long life and I hope it it has tons of great games on it. And, and I guess we'll see. Yeah, agreed. I I'm hoping it is not more than five hundred because if if they're waiting this long, I do start getting nervous. Of mm, is this thing going to be six hundred bucks? I don't think so, but hopefully, my worries are unfounded. And in turn of events, rather shocking, but upon analysis, maybe not so. Rumors abound of three four three industries moving from their in house engine Split Space to Unreal Engine five. Big name behind this rumor is YouTube slash journalist Jer uh, Jeremy Penter. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. This is uh, also known as ACG, and this is via his Twitter. He said, quote, I can only confirm that many sources are saying this and very clear that it's already been decided and Halo is for sure switching to Unreal. I feel like it's time for other switches behind the scenes, including people leaving and their past problems. Unreal is a great choice, end quote. Now, not an outright proclamation, but CMC does have substantiated rumors to the fact that this change is happening if he is to be believed. Now, a piece of this that seems for it to be leaning towards the truth is reported on by Lords of Gaming and Windows Central. Lead engineer behind the engine, uh, David Berger, departed 343 last month, but was overshadowed by the Bonnie Ross departure. I believe it was actually maybe five days after Bonnie Ross left, he left, and I think it just got overshadowed by Bonnie Ross's departure, of course, being a much bigger deal. But upon analysis, maybe this split space thing is actually true, and they're just abandoning their in-house and just going to go straight up to Unreal Engine 5 unsure but i would find it interesting that he says multiple people reporting on this um he has a okay track record i would say with rumors uh, i think as as good as someone who just reports on things is um what did you think of this change if you first off if you even heard about it and second uh what did you think yeah i mean at, at this point i don't think there's much that that i can say about halo infinite that hasn't be, been said a million times already yeah uh I think the future of 343 is is iffy. Um, I don't know if... I'm not saying that the studio is going to shut down, but I'm not 100% sure if they're going to be given the reins for the future of Halo or whatever the next Halo is. Um, I, I just, I, like I said, there's. I don't think there's much I can add to the conversation other than Halo Infinite isn't what it was supposed to be. Hopefully it becomes a a great story of redemption another redemption story in video games but as of right now it, it just i think it's pretty much impossible to call halo infinite anything but a huge disappointment yeah i i agree i also don't think i can add much this has been long talked about both on the show and just other places so don't think i have too much else to add i will quickly add that um Apparently, the project that they're currently working on, which is rumored to be a single player and multiplayer expansion, is still using split space. So if this is using Unreal Gen 5 and they're actually switching, it's for future projects past even that. We shall see. I, I agree with pretty much everything you said. So let's move on. Need for Speed game has come and apparently is leaking everywhere. Uh, the one I saw was a Japanese game listing, uh, but there's several other ways that you can find this thing out. It's called Need for Speed Unbound. Apparently, it's going to launch December 2nd. Uh, currently, it's only for current gen. Uh, no, there's no last gen. I saw Tom Henderson actually confirm this, that it is only coming to current gen systems. So maybe this is some sort of enhanced game that the previous generations can't run. We'll have to see. I have almost no faith in Need for Speed as a name right now, as it's been so long since I've seen anything of substance from that franchise. Yeah, I mean, 
anytime a leak happens, I uh, first thing I'll say is I I I feel bad for the for the devs. I'm sure, they've been working very hard at it, and leaks are never fun. It's never the way that you want to put your stuff out there. But you know, I personally I don't care much for Need, need for Speed, and I don't think many people do. I think that that franchise doesn't carry the weight it used to at all, especially within the racing genre. I mean. When you when you think about modern racing games, Need for Speed is is not on that list. You're thinking Forza, you're thinking Gran Turismo, and then whatever other thing. But it's it's definitely not <laughs> Need for Speed. Hopefully yeah. it changes, but I don't know. There's I feel like there's been 17 Need for Speed games coming <laughs> out in the last four years, and I I lost track of all of them. I agree. I agree. They, it doesn't. It almost doesn't mean anything to me anymore. So that's why I just am like, yep, it's coming. Uh, apparently, it's coming. Uh, they haven't announced it, so they're going to try and announce it and release it very quickly. From EA, that could mean anything. Uh, that could mean that they have uh, respect for it, or that they just are just dumping this thing. So. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. I agree, though. They are now we're near the conversation of relevant racing titles. Hopefully, this changes. They're clearly trying to, uh, from the screenshots, they're clearly trying to invoke Underground, which is probably the last great Need for Speed game, which was PS2, by the way, when I would argue they were probably last extremely relevant in the conversation. Yeah, I mean... Best of luck, man. Best yep. of luck to you. Yep, I, I agree. Best of luck to everyone involved. This is the start of the actual show for the week. First main story. PlayStation gave a very interesting interview. Uh, Herman Holst specifically did. Of course, Herman Holst, head of PlayStation. He gave an interview with Axios, detailing some of the upcoming games as a service titles we can expect from PlayStation in the coming years. One of the focal points of the interview is something we have heard of, but will lead to the next point. When asked about the multiplayer games coming to PlayStation, he detailed who to expect it from and how many. Quote, we are diversifying now and we have stood up 12 projects in total in the live ops multiplayer space. End quote. Now, we haven't seen any of these projects announced, but Herman said to expect them from newly acquired teams and internal teams. Also important to note in relation to the new IP, he said, quote, we're not excluding bringing some of our beloved existing franchises into live games, end quote. Quickly after that point, he did mention that single-player games will still be a focus as, quote, some of our biggest titles in the single-player narrative-driven space are also our most profitable titles, end quote. I'll come to that quote uh, a little bit later on in, <laughs> uh, to kind of uh, talk about it a bit more. Now buried in the response to mobile games and their PC transitions had two interesting tidbits of information that will go a long way. Sony will still make PS4 games, as at least according to him, quote, we certainly don't want to forget the millions of active players on PS4. And we want to ensure there are great games for them as well, Hill says. Quote, we're evaluating on a case-by-case basis, end quote. Also stating that PC ports are, of course, aiding them to be uh, able to invest in their projects with additional capital the PC ports are bringing in. And while we're talking about PlayStation, let's quickly we'll go over Herman Holst on a PlayStation YouTube video stating how launches on PC and PlayStation will work going forward. Quote, there will be at least a year between PlayStation consoles and PC game releases, with exception to live service games, which are expected to launch day and date. End quote. Mario, I will quickly start us off as I want to quickly go back to something. Um, I, I find that this very specific quote, quote, some of our biggest titles in the single player narrative driven space are also most our most profitable titles and quote. That's all that they make right now. So that almost means nothing. Uh, I will hold my breath to see if there will be additional single player titles in the future. I think there will be a clear major departure from single player games, whereas we will see much more games as a service multiplayer titles. I mean, he says he all, they already have 12 projects in total, which is a insane number, especially when you talk about games as a service. Now, you could argue maybe he's talking about multiplayer as a standalone experience versus a games as a service, a la Apex Legends and Fortnite. But I would argue that's not gonna that's not most likely the projects that he's talking about. Maybe we will have some. Maybe he is talking about spider-man 2 having co-op and that includes a multiplayer space i just find that hard to believe uh we already have some other rumors of the horizon remake that will also feature multiplayer that could be included in this as well 
who knows uh mario what did you think about all this and start wherever you'd like i mean for me i i don't think any of this is shocking um yeah if you've been following along with playstation all the acquisitions they've made recently a lot of a lot of new studios that are focused around multiplayer stuff it 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 has kind of come to show that that playstation is going to start to to become a much bigger uh player in the multiplayer game obviously they've dominated the single player landscape for such a long time uh in in terms of quality and just sheer sheer success money wise right uh, it it makes sense for them to try to go and 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 go into the multiplayer landscape as well and honestly i, d- I don't think it will affect what what we think of playstation much i think no matter what, I think PlayStation understands that their name is associated with a certain level of quality, um, for the most part, anyway. Um, you know, when when a new Spider-Man game comes out, God of War Ragnarok is about to come out, uh, Ratchet and Clank and Ghost of Tsushima and, and The Last of Us and all of these IPs and all of these studios that PlayStation is 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 the head of are associated with a certain level of quality. And I don't think they're going to let that go. I think they're going to try to continue that on the multiplayer aspect. And in terms of games as a service, I know for a lot of people that's that's a dirty word almost. And and I don't disagree. I tend to get very uh, a little skeptical whenever I hear somebody say something about a games as a service. But I I have more faith in PlayStation because of their track record that. They're gonna put the the level of effort that they do, and even if I'm not a gigantic multiplayer person, for certain things I am. But I have a, a level of faith that PlayStation can deliver good experiences. I think nowadays, a games as a service, many different uh, 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 developers have proved that you can make a games as a service that isn't you know gouging you for money and that delivers constantly on quality. Uh, there's multiple examples in of both free to play games and and paid games that are services and are successful and people are happy with. Uh, that I think PlayStation, you know, having Bungie now as you know Bungie being one of the 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 developers in the world that has had a game as a platform for a long time, be very successful and very beloved in Destiny Two. I think they. Them acquiring Bungie was very, 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 very strategic, not just because, oh yeah, now we own Destiny and now we make all the money from Destiny, but because they're probably one of the most experienced devs in the world when it comes to live service games. For a company that's going to do a lot of live service games or attempting to do a lot of live service games and attempting to do them right, I think they're primed up for success. And I I honestly think I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see what one of the biggest players in video games looks like when they're focusing on multiplayer. Uh, Cause like I said, they've dominated the single player likes landscape for such a long time that if they translate that to multiplayer, I think it can, it could just be really good for the industry overall. I would argue that games like Fortnite and apex legends and now rocket league also being free to play and, and, and um, games like, Destiny 2, I would argue that all of those games have proven that you can do it right and you can do it in a way where you're not gouging people for money, fans are happy, and I'm excited to see it. None of the big players, other than like Epic, obviously, have delivered something like that. Halo Infinite was a chance to be that, and so far hasn't been great. But I, if if PlayStation is putting the, the level of care that they do into their single player games i think this can be great for the industry honestly i pretty much agree with everything i will say i think i'm a little trepidatious on the actual usage of the live service games coming from playstation because they just mean so much to me in that single player space where we've seen so many people try and fail i i think of ubisoft as a prime example of that just trying over and over again to try and get something to work and at the end of the day, nothing really ever did, and they had to just close a bunch of games. Um, other than that, though, Sony is a completely different beast in terms of, like you said, quality. When when PlayStation yeah. releases a game, you 
expect a certain level of quality from it so that is actually what turns me around in thinking that that this can mean much more than a Fortnite version 5 from a random developer that saw that how much Fortnite money made and they would just want to make that again and the, the the two things I that I, I want to make very clear is a they're not going to stop making single player games um, because yeah there's a lot of money to be made in multiplayer but look at the sales numbers for PlayStation single player games they are very very good they are very very profitable they make a lot of money people are very happy with them the PlayStation Five is the biggest console in the world right now for a reason they're not gonna this doesn't mean that they're going to stop and all their games are going to be multiplayer from now on. They again, PlayStation cares about their brand and they understand that, you know, a a PlayStation first party game, single player game means something that many, 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 if not almost every publisher in the world doesn't have that same meaning. Um, So they're not going to stop doing that anytime soon. And the other thing I want to say is they're going to start their multiplayer live service games with probably the best possible game to start that with uh, in terms of their experiment. And that's whatever The Last of Us Factions is. That's already a game that people are very excited about. Already a game that people are buzzing about. And again, it goes back to what I'm saying because that is going to be a live live service game. That is going to be a multiplayer game. But you don't see a lot of people online saying, man, I, I'm, I'm so scared that they're going to do loot boxes in The Last of Us Factions. And that's because, again, the PlayStation brand carries a certain level of, of quality and respect to it. And people understand that Naughty Dog is developing this and people understand that whatever it is, it's going to be done well. I would be very, very shocked if this game uh, comes out and is a mess. It, it, Ubisoft and PlayStation are in two completely different levels. PlayStation is one of the biggest video game players in the world. And and The Last of Us Faction is going to be a really, really, really good first try into the multiplayer world. I do agree that Last of Us Faction stands to basically be the point at which they will need to jump off and figure it out. Uh, what what does a multiplayer Sony game look like? I, we haven't seen one in so long. I think everyone just forgot what that means. What is an online... S- sony project i mean is a mag you know so i think it will take us a a a while to get used to that but i I do think factions will be a big indicator um and the bigger question is are we gonna have to pay for it or not which is hopefully yes we will but who knows we'll uh, see i mean i uh, even if it is a free-to-play game i i wouldn't it's not instantly a a red flag for me because it's playstation because it's naughty dog and again, we know for a fact that all PlayStation first-party studios are very, very collaborative with one another. They, they, one of the things that makes PlayStation excellent is that they do allow studios to help each other out and to talk to one another and give each other experiences. There's, you know, Death Stranding was built on the Horizon engine, right? Stuff, stuff along those, those lines. Having Bungie as a, as a partner... They're, 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 I don't think there's a single better partner you can when delving into multiplayer. There's not a better partner to have than Bungie. And I, and I think that's why PlayStation acquired Bungie because they want to do it the right way and there's not many better people to partner up with. Agreed. And, and just as a reminder, the CFO Hiro- Hiroki Totiko last Oh no, this February did say an earnings call by March of 2026 that will be more than 10 live service games. Very interested to see how that goes. Because that is very quick. That is only in four years we will get 10 PlayStation games as a service. Very shocking. All right. And oh, and uh, to quickly jump off from that, let's talk about the Horizon news. So essentially, uh, massive reports stating that a remaster is in the work. Um, now this first part is unconfirmed, but I will leave it in a document featuring several announced and unannounced Sony interactive entertainment projects include a remastered version of horizon zero dawn for PlayStation five and horizon online multiplayer project for PlayStation five and PC and was recently shared with Gamatsu. Gamatsu was able to identify, uh, 
independently verified several titles listed in the document with multiple sources familiar with their development, including the Horizon titles. So, no one, not many people have confirmed on the specific list, as if that is true, they have multiple games, uh, or at least uh, names of the games, on a maybe official paper of some kind, but I don't really want to focus on that. I want to focus on the potential remake of Horizon Zero Dawn. I want to propose a question to you, actually, Mario, before we jump into the actual full-on conversation, is something I saw pretty much perpetuated throughout kind of industry discussion is that maybe they are becoming inept in some way, uh, showing their hand of a Horizon Zero Dawn remake of a game that is pretty recent, especially in memory and both in terms of release date. What did you think first off of seeing these news? And also, do you think this is a show of hand, although it didn't sound like you, we kind of touched on it earlier. Is this some sort of ineptitude being shown from Sony that they feel the need of remaking a game so close to its original release date? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, the last of us part one was already such a, divisive game right? yeah and definitely um, and at least that one has the benefit of you know the original game came out almost 10 years ago um and you know if you play part one it's it's pretty much impossible to not see that a lot of effort went into that game clearly a lot of effort did go into that game and yep. it it's up to each person to determine whether or not that effort is worth it or not. Personally, for me, I think so. I really enjoyed la playing Last of Us Part 1, and jumping to Part 2 immediately after that really helped show me how much more similar Part 1 and Part 2 are than what I thought it, they were originally. Like Those games translate off of one another so well now that they're both modernized. For Horizon, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, at first, I didn't really love the idea, and it kind of rolled my eyes a little bit at, you know, PlayStation now remaking basically all of their games and, and, and dropping them for $70. The more I think about it, the more I understand what, what PlayStation is trying to do if this is true. Um, I think the biggest thing that I wrapped my head around that some people need to wrap their heads around is that this isn't for you. They're not doing this for you. If you already played Horizon Zero Dawn and liked Horizon Zero Dawn, they don't really care for you to go out there and buy the game again. I think this is more of a of a multi-tiered approach in the way that, just like we saw with The Last of Us, right? The show's coming out. It's a great time to release the game because, as we've seen with The Witcher on Netflix and the cyberpunk anime on Netflix, once a big IP drops on a TV show or a movie or whatever it is, the the numbers don't lie and people go to play those games. Um, you can see it with Cyberpunk again. It As soon as the anime, anime dropped, the numbers of Cyberpunk skyrocketed. And I think PlayStation is trying to capitalize on that because as we've seen in the news, they're making a lot of TV shows and movies and a lot of entertainment related things. I think all, that's that's pretty much what this is. Uh, it's them understanding that Horizon at some point is going to get their TV show. They're hoping that TV show is a big hit. And they want people to buy the new game. And, and they don't want people to, to play a quote-unquote old game, right? They want the, the newcomers to come into the PlayStation ecosystem and, and play a game that feels modern and looks modern and, and wows you and impresses you. And... That's what it is. It, it reminds me a little bit of Apple uh, in a way where Apple has the approach where no matter what, they're trying to get you in their ecosystem. And it, I, I can think of like the newest Apple Watch, right? If you, if you want to go with me on this quick little tangent of the Apple Watch Ultra or whatever it is, has so many features that 99% of people do not care about, right? Like all the, all the deep diving settings and all the marathon running settings people that 99 percent of the population does not give a single crap about but there's that one percent of people that actually do really care about that and that one percent of people now have a thing to go to and for apple it's more people to add into their ecosystem more people to draw in right and and, and that's how they get you right you get the apple watch 
and you go, man, I love how it helps me on my dives. And then you go, well, I already have an Apple Watch. May as well go ahead and get the AirPods because I've heard the AirPods are really cool. And then you get the AirPods and you go, man, I love how they work with each other. Uh, you know what? I need a laptop upgrade. I may as well get the MacBook because they all work together so well. And boom, you're in the Apple ecosystem. Congratulations. You get, you get three months of Apple TV Plus for free. And suddenly here you are watching an Apple show on your Apple computer, listening to it on your Apple headphones. That's, that's why Apple does the things they do. This dystopian I think PlayStation, when you put it that way. It is. I mean, <laughs> but that's what they do. And it, it, it's a smart way to run a business and at the end of the day if you're if you're delivering things that people enjoy there's nothing per, per se wrong with it i think playstation's trying to do the same thing and i think the last of us hbo show is going to be a huge showing of that where so many people are going to watch that game that 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 show i mean that don't play games right but suddenly you're going to have all these people Watch this show that they heard that it's from a f from a game, right? And a lot of people, I'm telling you right now, a lot of people that aren't interested in games are going to be interested in games suddenly. And that's the reason why they released Last of Us Part 1. Uh, I can think of my sister-in-law, for example. She was, she was in town recently, and she was talking about the HBO show with, with her sister and her mom, and she asked me if she could borrow my PlayStation my PS4 so she could play through The Last of Us because she wanted to play it ahead of the game. And that opened my eyes a little bit to PlayStation's idea. And I think for Horizon, it's the same thing. They're going to release a Horizon show. I think it's, I think it's a Netflix show. Um, yes. And we've already seen the pipeline of show comes out, millions of people play the game. And I think this is the same thing. This is going to be, you know, the Netflix show comes out. They're hoping it, it's, a, it's a huge hit. Suddenly, a lot of people are going to want to play Horizon. Maybe you get a new PlayStation. Maybe you borrow a PlayStation from somebody. And guess what? One of the big new releases is Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Remastered or Remake or whatever it is. And it's a beautiful new game. It plays like a 2023, 2024 game, whenever the hell this comes out. And that's who this is for they're trying to get new people in the playstation ecosystem they're trying to have people immediately understand what playstation games are all about and i get it i get why it's an eye roll i get why people a lot of people want you know whatever time and effort and money goes into these remakes to go into other stuff but at the end of the day they're running a business they're going to make a lot of money off of this and i don't think these necessarily mean that Oh, all the PlayStation does is do remakes now. I don't think so. I think these are just a new pillar in Sony's business strategy. Uh, like I said, up until now, I have a lot of faith in PlayStation because of their track record and because of the quality that they deliver. That even though I was, I did roll my eyes when I first saw this. Now I'm, I, I don't care. I'm not planning on playing this game. There's a difference between replaying. Uh, the Last of Us, you know, it was such a cinematic game that is almost ten years old. There, there is a lot of a lot that I got from replaying it and re-experiencing it that I'm not necessarily going to get from a New Horizon, right? I don't, I'm not, I'm not dying over putting another seventy, eighty hours into Horizon Zero Dawn again. But I get it. I, I, I do understand where they're coming from, and I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it for now. I think there was a lot of interesting points you brought up during that conversation. I'm going to quickly add in two things then. One, um, let's not forget, don't buy things that you don't want. That would be the one thing that you do. And if you do not yeah. want this and you don't like it, please just don't. don't. You got to not buy it. You can't complain and then still buy it. I point to Call of Duty and Madden, these things. You still buy them. So, you, you know, it doesn't really matter if you complain about it. Yes. Second, I do feel for people that find it um, sad, or at least sad to hear that they were quote unquote wasting resources on this. Again, that's air quotes for audio listeners. That I get what you mean by that, as in like you would rather them spend it on new IP, but I have to agree with Mario here that the, they're not necessarily by making this for someone who played Horizon when it launched. They're making it for the person that watches the Netflix series and goes, oh, wow, this is really cool. I wonder what the game is like. And they go and they play the game and they love it. They get the $70. Who cares if they play it or not there? I do it. Maybe they check out the multiplayer aspect in it. And boom, bam, they made 70 bucks off somebody. It's, it's really just, at the end of the day, that simple. 
it's point A to point B. They play, they watch the show, they play the game, or vice versa. They play, they buy the game, they watch the show. Synergy is the corporate mindset here. I think that is going to bring up they they want a relevant title that is close to that launch that doesn't look like an old game that looks like a newer game and it's poppy and the screenshot look really pretty on their TV. They buy it and they get increased earning calls and they look like they make a bunch of money and et cetera, et cetera. And also it's much, much cheaper to remake a title. So. Yeah. yeah. It, even, even, even if you are remaking from the ground up, it, it, it does take work and it's not, you know, it's not click on the thing, upgrade resolution, ship it. But you know, the resources put into a remake of Horizon Zero Dawn are not going to be the resources into a new IP, you know what I mean? Like, And also, what you have to understand is, it, at the end of the day, video games are a business, and if if these ventures, if these remakes make PlayStation a ton of money, in a perfect world that... The only thing that that means is that it's more money for for new IPs and for bigger games and whatever. So it it's all part of it at the end of the day. It's it's a business and it seems like it's a lucrative thing to do. I don't see why not. You know, I I, no. I get what PlayStation's trying to do. If if now do I would I wish that PlayStation had a Game Pass and then and all of these things that you know all this pipeline that we're talking about of watching the game the show and then getting to play the game was through a game pass service like yeah that'd be really cool but that's clearly not what playstation is all about they want to get you your 70 dollars, and that's okay it's again the game's not for you i agree with you if you don't want to buy the game don't buy the game i'm not gonna buy the game just because I'm not personally interested in this, but I get why somebody would be. If if my girlfriend plays, watches the Horizon show and suddenly says, man, I loved it. I want to play Horizon. I would recommend her to play the the possible Horizon remake. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I, and also, I don't think this is quite the same as even the Last of Us Part 1 argument as this is a, adding a entire multiplayer, multiplayer suite. So I would argue it's almost a different conversation Altogether, although I never cared about the last part one uh, multiplayer, so I wasn't even one of those people that were complaining about it. Yes, I do need to run to the bathroom real quick, so I'll let you for the Please. next segment. I will be right back. Yes, this next one isn't really too too much to talk about, as I just wanted to bring it up as is more fascinating than anything. I want everyone to go if you can and have the time check out the uh, chart that Microsoft made. Uh, e- to order and to help them make the case for their Activision Blizzard uh, King acquisition. Go check this out. You can find it on their socials. You, I believe you can find it on their website. Um, they even have an entire uh, page on their website dedicated to talking about why it's good. I saw a couple people confused on why they make this. I don't know why they're confused. This is not for like us, although this is a very fascinating thing to read. This is for to aid in their acquisition to be able to point to a specific place to go, hey, we made this website, and it shows you all the nice things that will happen when Xbox buys Activision Blizzard, all the great things for the industry that will happen, blah, 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 how great it will be. Um, we'll all get Lambos and and be able to watch the sunset when Activision Blizzard and King are purchased by Xbox. So everyone get excited, but please check out this chart. It's interesting I'll, and, and, and incredibly fascinating to see a giant chart of basically how money has worked in the entire industry uh f- since conception p- pretty much in 1972 uh look look at this it, it will teach you a lot i loved loved that they made this i don't even care this is pretty much specifically made for one reason i just love that that this was created um so really just go look this look at look at this uh moving on to interesting th- Thing. Again, this is another instance that this just uh, w- uh, I found this just as we were going live, so I couldn't make a write up about this. So I'm going to be reading from RPG site uh, by Kite Stinbuck, and this was published yesterday. Try Ace, the development studio behind Valkyrie Profile in the Star Ocean series, is having a tough financial situation. Game Biz, a Japanese news outlet focusing on the uh, country's gaming industry, published an article based on Try Ace's financial report. 
for the previous financial year that ended June 2022. The article revealed that Trice's sales during the whole year dropped by 42.9% uh, from over 2 billion to 1.25 billion yen, which is about $8.6 million. But while the company had an operating profit of uh, $1.67 million in June 2021 fiscal year, that turned into a huge loss of about $4.34 million. Likewise, their final profit went from the uh, 171 million yen to a deficit of 684 million yen. The article went further to declare that Trace in a state of insolvency. Of uh, And then to quickly go over for additional context, the financial situation Trace used to have Star Ocean Animinus, a free-to-play multiple game with gotcha, microtransaction feature characters from Star Ocean, and other guest crossover franchises. However, Square Enix shut the uh, game down November of 2019 and in Japan of June 24th, 2021. So this is sad to hear as Valky Profile is a... I have returned. Oh, you're back. We're back. We're just going over uh, Tries having some issues with a huge loss in their physical year posted um, that ended June 2022. Uh, like I said, we basically just uh, finished out their in serious trouble they might be in a state of insolvency and they might actually be able to uh, have to declare bankruptcy which is incredibly sad to hear they could make a comeback they might find some sort of investor that will help them out maybe they'll go internationally and talk to people abroad uh or maybe they'll go to someone like square or sony and, and just see if they can get a hand on making the next project so they can kind of lengthen the, the uh candle a bit as uh i would say before they are snuffed out uh, all the well to them, though. Try Ace of Aki Profile. I heard are great things. I just wanted to quickly bring this to everyone's attention as they might be in trouble. And a prime uh, prime for acquisition as well as if they are insolvent, someone can snatch them up for cheap. As we're about to talk about. <laughs> According to writers, Tencent is seeking more control and ownership in their purchases moving forward as they own many minority stakes in companies and want to further expand their web in the industry with a focus in Europe. According to writer's sources. Now, I talk about Tencent almost every week. I won't belabor the point anymore. Everyone knows my feelings on Tencent. Everyone knows my feelings on them going into the industry. It's very sad, etc., etc. Mari, anything you want to say on this specific topic or the previous one specifically talking about Tri-Ace? Tencent is real scary, and I'm still mad about them for the fan bite thing. Uh... Corporations, big corporations aren't great, and uh, big, so, big, big uh, what is it? Consolidation, Consolidation. isn't great either. Uh, yeah, scary, scary hours in the video game industry. Yeah, everyone, just keep a lookout. Just keep, keep a lookout. They own, they own a lot already. Be wary of the Chinese Communist Party. Francis Townsend has stepped down as chief compliance officer at Activision Blizzard. But I don't rejoice too hard as she is remaining at, at, on the board as a strategic advisor. Now, oh, they have to keep her. They can't just bear her out. They would have to buy out her shares in the company to really kick her out. And I find that this is really just to, I, in my opinion, save face. As I saw a lot of people rejoicing about the fact that she's leaving as she's a very controversial figure. And uh, she is not the best at, it seems, talking to people. Uh, you could just look at her past history on... The way she tried to handle the Activision Blizzard situation in probably the worst way that anyone could ever handle a situation that way. Um, it is almost uh, laughable that she's in this position to begin with. Um, second, uh, I will remind everyone that uh, this doesn't really mean anything. It just means, again, this she doesn't have the title anymore. Arguably, it won't matter because they're all about to be bought out anyways. So, I wanted to bring this attention as people were kind of celebrating this, but... I find that the celebration maybe was missed as possibly people did not read the article. She is pretty much, she still has all her shares. The title pretty much is the only thing that has left. She is still there. They're going to have to still make her, but she probably has a pretty substantial share count. So she's probably looking at a cool hundred million, probably higher than that. Who knows? Uh, the golden parachute will be much big for the board members of Activision Blizzard, which is sad to hear because uh, from an outside looking in, they all seem like terrible people. Yeah, uh, people in power positions don't tend to get what they deserve. If, if step downs don't really mean anything, uh, 
even if they do get kicked out from companies or in some sort of legal trouble, they'll always have golden parachutes. They'll never fully be accountable. And that's the sad reality that we live in. But yeah, you know, a name means nothing. People can have no name and all the control and all the power and all the money. It it doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's a little depressing, but it's the truth. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to add. It, it, my, one of my saddest things, I brought this up before, but I'll bring it up to you as well. Um, the saddest thing about the Activision Blizzard is no one is seeing any repercussions. The, the main person that everyone doesn't like, Bobby Kotick, uh, you can argue or not, like, what he did is bad or not. That dude's fucking, that dude seems like the opposite of what you'd want as your leader, especially given his past history. Although he did save Activision Blizzard in a time of tumultual, that dude seems like a trash bag, and he is about to make bank off of this acquisition. So, the bad guys seem to have won anyways. It doesn't matter. They usually do, especially if they're rich. Fandom. The popular entertainment quote-unquote wiki-like site focused on pop culture announced this week it will be acquiring a number of sites from Red Ventures. It is a long list, so here's everything acquired. GameSpot. Metacritic, TV Guide, Game Facts, Giant Bomb, Cord Cutter News, and Comic Vine. Financials weren't disclosed specifically on this, but I did see $50 million total for everything acquired. But that could not be cooperated anywhere to completely confirm. I would not be shocked if it's pretty close to that number. As no offense, I don't think uh, a lot of these would have fetched an incredibly high price. Although I think most people would think it, it would cost more to buy some of these. Um, this was, cl- this was clearly a dump, I think. Red Ventures, I don't think gave, it gave any shits, uh, pretty much about these people. So I, I think it's actually, it, it's, who knows if this is good? I don't really know fandom as a company. I tried to research them a little bit. I didn't find anything too crazy, I to, to really report on. So I will have to wait and see if this changes anything about them. I saw a lot of people making jokes because fandom does have ter, and I mean, terrible wiki pages i mean every, every time i find a fandom wiki it's almost covered in ads i can barely read anything it's very annoying so if that turns if game facts turns into that i'll be very sad uh to say the least did you have any reaction to this news i saw people kind of not knowing what to do with this news they they kind of you know there was reports on it and things of that nature i just didn't see too, too many people really react it was more just kind of reporting on the news yeah uh for me Anytime something like this happens, especially in you know in this current world with with game sites and game me- games media, uh, certainly in the games industry as well, but especially nowadays in games media, uh, it's it's honestly more scary than anything for me. Uh, just because whenever companies acquire other companies, uh, oftentimes layoffs come following after fa- afterwards. I hope that's not the case. Uh, I'm sure the people working at those sites are going through a lot right now and a lot of reshifting and, and, and refocusing. So I just, I hope things stay the same for, for, for people in those jobs. And I hope they're not going through it too bad right now because it, it, it can't be very uh, easy to go through that, especially with all the you know, things that have happened recently in the news with like fan bite and stuff like that. So hope the very best for the people that do work at these sites. I know some people that work at these sites and I just, I hope it's an easy transition. Agreed. I, I know a few people as well. So I hope I, I don't want anyone losing their job. I would hope that fandom had the capital and wherewithal in hindsight to at least say, Hey, we're going to drop this $50 million and we know the overhead going in. I imagine the overhead on some of these sites cannot be that high, right? I know GameSpot, GameSpot probably being the highest where, although Giant Bomb, I don't know too specifically, they, they might have a pretty big uh, overhead counting with how many people work there, but we'll have to see what this actually means. We won't really honestly know until about a year or two later, really later, because they're going to, they're going to act like everything's like nice and dandy now. We'll have to see when uh, actual financials start being reported uh, if they care to keep things as they are right now. Anyways. And we, yeah, and, and I do think it's interesting to bring up G4 and Fanbyte fi- seeing that a giant swath of layoffs happen and 
could possibly happen again. I, I really don't want to see that, though. Now, we have Game Passes for the week, and this is an incredible week for Game Pass. And, of course, every time they release it, we go over each week. So let's start that. This is available as of recording. Chivalry 2, this is Cloud Console and PC. Medieval Dynasty is coming October 6th. That's going to be only on Xbox Series S and X, though. The Walking Dead, the complete first season, is going to come to PC October 6th. This is an incredible game. Please try it out. This is the first season of, uh, and you're about to get the second season, too. Uh, right when I'm about to read it, but the first season is one of my favorite games ever, or at least one of my favorite stories ever told, especially with the main character. I loved, loved this game. and It's one of the first games that made me cry. I'll say that. The Walking Dead Season 2 coming to PC October 6th. Costume Quest Cloud and Console October 11th. Heard very good things about that. I've never played it, though. Evil? Eva? Evil, I think is how you're supposed to pronounce it. Console and PC, October 11th. This is a day one on Game Pass title. Dyson Sphere Program PC, October 13th. I heard a lot of people very excited about this. This is available day one on Game Pass as well. This is another big title. Scorn, finally seeing a release. Cloud, PC, and Xbox Series S and X, October 14th. Available day one on Game Pass. Terrifying game. Get your umbilical cords ready. Get them ready. Get them ready. Get everything phallic that you have around the house ready. This is a, mm -hmm. a, a very strange game, and I will have to play it out of sheer curiosity. A Plague Tale Requiem Cloud PC Xbox Series S and X October 18th available day one Game Pass. Cannot cannot wait to see what they do with this. Very excited. Looks like she's going to be murdering a lot of people. Um, I will be trying this game really quick. Uh, Pro uh Proteus Cloud Cloud and Console that's available now. It's a clearly inspired by the original Doom games. It looks very fun. I'll be trying it out. This is everything leaving. This is going to be everything leaving October 15th. And remember, you can buy these games, either finish them out before they leave, or you can buy them for 20% off while they're still in Game Pass. So if you want them, make sure to buy them. This is Blood Roots, Cloud Console and PC, Echo Generation, Cloud Console and PC, Into the Pit, Cloud Console and PC, Ring of Pain, Cloud Console and PC, Sable, Cloud Console and PC, The Good Life, Cloud Console and PC. That's everything about Game Pass. Not a lot of data updates. I didn't see anything too crazy. I think everyone's kind of getting ready for this very huge swath of games coming very soon. I think everyone's trying to get the news out now so they don't have to worry about talking about things. Because once we really hit October 20th-ish, the that's when we're going to see a lot of games. We're going to see a lot of uh, talk. We're, we're going to see a lot of discussions around those games. So a lot of the wind will be taken out. So I think from that point until really the end of the year, everyone's going to be very busy. And of course, after that, we have holidays. Of course, yeah, I, it's uh, game season's coming. It's coming. I'm very excited. I actually thought about it the other day um, because so there's so many people that are busy. I'm like, yeah, no shit. It is the end of the year. Like, I'm, I I didn't even think about that when discussing with a couple friends that, oh, yeah, no, people are going to be very busy in the next coming months, especially with solo projects and, and reviews. And there's so many things. Very exciting. Of course, I end the show with a question just like I begin and ask, of course, ask my co-host, what? Do they have keto for the week? Of course, Mario, this could be a game, a comic book, a book, TV show, podcast, manga, anything, really. What do you have keto for the week? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so for me, my game plan for this upcoming week, game-wise, is obviously more Elden Ring. Yes. That's, I'm doing a lot of that. Uh, I have been playing through The Last of Us Part Two with he and my girlfriend, nice. so we're going to keep doing that. The one that I want to do soon is I want to finish my Metal Hellsinger uh, playthrough. Okay. I played about half of the game, really, really dug it, and I haven't played it since my first session. It's a, it's a pretty short game, mm. uh, but it's a ton of fun, and I'm w definitely one of these days, that's the one that I'm eyeing my out for really, really beating it. My week is... I don't, I don't really know, if I'm being honest. I think I'm going... Because I just finished the Vi Max. I'm actually playing Tunic right now. I think that's why I'm going to spend the majority of the time. Tunic is a, so, so far, incredible experience um, that I'm going through right now. I I enjoy the... How do I even put this? The retro take on game design clearly inspired by something similar to Dark Souls kind of mesh into this beautiful artsy fox pretty landscape everything looks very nice the water looks like 
like the water looks incredible i i I, I'm enjoying this game so so much, and I've only played so little of it. It's it's pretty rare that the game has gripped me so hard, uh, uh, ooh, so hard. Um, but I can't wait to play more of it. Honestly, I, I think that's really gonna be my week. I'm gonna keep playing this game. I'm not looking anything up. I'm trying very hard to not look anything up and just figure it out. I was walking around this place probably for an hour, just lost, didn't know where to go. Went to a very very far area. I went to an area. That was clearly over leveled. Had to run. I, uh, I. There's a special moment. Mm, the, mm, it's not really a spoiler, I guess. There's a special moment that you learn things via. I don't know if you've ever played it, Mario, but um, you find. I have it installed in my in my PC. It's one of the ones that I'm I'm gonna get around to at some point. So I, I'll I'll be light with what I'll say then. Um, there's a uh the tutorial are instruction manuals. And oh yeah, I know. I know about the instruction manual the mechanic. It's really, really cool. Very cool. It's beautifully done. There's an in-game instruction manual via, of course, instruction manuals that used to come with all games. And I love it. When you find something, you almost always learn something. I remember it was. There's so many aha moments. Like, oh, that's why I had this thing. And then they tell you, like, oh, use it here, and you'll uh, become stronger. And I'm like, and I was just blown away, like, oh, my God, I've been just walking around without doing that, and I didn't even think about it. it I just learned how to fast travel, which is another thing that, like, they kind of hint at, but they don't tell you, which is it's very fun. I love their approach to game design. There w was a specific point in the game that I was just like, oh, my God, hats off. I, like, this was an incredible showcase of how well they designed this game in a very specific way i don't want to get into it but there's so many little things that are happening and i'm like wow I, this is very very impressive and I, I can't wait to play more of it I, I think that will pretty much be my my weekend and i'm sure we'll watch a movie or something uh from that ever growing list of movies that i'm trying to get through but enough of that that is the show for the week thank you so much for joining me mario numbers um Thank you for having me, dude. We, we Pleasure to be back on. Yes, I, you're you're always welcome. Of course, uh, we already talked about it, but but where can the people find you? Just as a reminder for everybody, as we close the show, you you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Bros at Bros. Uh, you can find Spoonful on Twitter at Spoonful Vids. Make sure to follow on that if you like me and Emmett. You can uh, check out the podcast. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel so we can have a custom link. Uh, that's pretty much about it. I, I blocked them. I don't like any of them. So, yeah. Um, we if you want to, if you want to be like me, just block them. But uh, no, <laughs> uh, g great. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I love I love Spoonful. It's such a good idea. Although, uh, I it was funny. I when he told me you guys did regular podcasts, I was like, what you guys do? I had never heard of this. And then you guys made Spoonful. I was like, perfect, perfect. There you go. Perfect timing. Um, yeah. That that's gonna be it from us. Uh regular schedule oh i didn't even open with this hilarious now this is going to go out earlier than usual because we are uh, recording a day earlier so i'm going to try and get it out a day earlier if it isn't then disregard this but n nothing has changed everything will go live as a regularly scheduled fridays um until th until the next time that's that's it that's all the action the next week might be solo actually so get be ready for just me and you next week this will be very fun but aside from that thank you so much and uh remember go chief